How do solar panels perform in some of the most cloudy regions of the country? Hi, I'm John Scipione with Green Homes America, the nation's leading home performance contractor with Energy Star. Today we're at the home of James and Marcy Morrison in Manlius, New York, and six months ago we installed a 3200 watt system on the rear of their home. Let's see how well it's performed for them. Well, James, the first 3200 watt array of your master solar plan installed by Green Homes has been tied to the power grid and producing electricity for about six months now. And I've got to tell you, it's still the most common reaction I get from people when we're talking generating solar power is, are you kidding? That works in central New York with our weather? Tell us about your experience. I do travel the world. I've seen systems in Japan and Germany amongst other places. And Japan has a tremendous amount of solar radiance, so to speak, is the phrase, and Germany does not and yet the installations are very popular in both locations. And uh, in this location, we were doing a new house. The house is three years old, as you said. And we had that unique opportunity to position the house just a little bit and how it faced the street to help with the solar. But the big part of it is, is there is a lot of sunlight. That's why we have all these trees, right? And it's sunny today. It's a beautiful day today. And so this system generates uh, 3,200 watts in a f bright sunny day like today. But even with cloud cover, this system generates almost 1,000 watts. And even on a rainy day with the sun on the other side of the house, there's so much ambient light, we'll get a couple hundred watts. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, we know that uh, this is not the end of the system. We've got a, a house that's using uh, a, a lot of electricity. You've taken some steps when you built the home to lower that load. Yes, we did. LED lighting and, and other types of heating measures, and we've got tankless hot water systems and a number of things there. Uh, talk a little bit about the planning and what your goals are going on in the future. Well, the planning uh, to get to this point was with the builder. And so if you're building a new home, you can bring a lot of these new technologies for energy efficiency to everything from your appliances to your heating and air conditioning, your cooling, more windows facing south, window coverings for the summertime and also help at night in the winter. These are all very common techniques and they're great things to do, maxing out your insulation. Um, but there are other things you can do um, when you're done with your new house and also you can do when you're planning the future. Um, for us, that included, as you mentioned, changing from halogen lights to compact fluorescence, changing to LED lighting. The house was a three megawatt per month house and lighting changes and high efficiency changes post move in brought it down to about a 2.1 megawatt. That means it uses 2,100,000 watts a month. Right, which is way over the average. It is uh, way over the average. <laughs> but at the same time, uh, what, is, what proportion are we generating now in regards to the, the savings from that? In a, in a typical autumn, winter, spring month, we're generating only about 8%. But again, 8% is a pretty big number. Right. Um, and in the spring, summer, early fall, uh, it'll climb up to as much as uh, 15 or 20 percent. Right. And the advantage there is, is that you're not always using your electricity, right? right? There are times when you have everything on. You're doing your laundry and you have your front load, high efficiency sure. washer, but right. you still have your dryer and everything else. And at those times, you're generating electricity that supplements the electricity needed from the utility. So you're saving money, but there are a lot of times where you don't need the lighting, like sunny days like today, right. where you don't have all these things on. You've done your laundry. Absolutely. And maybe you're watching TV. Maybe you're doing some other ancillary things in the house, but you're not drawing anywhere near the capacity of the system. Those are times where the meter actually is running backwards and the right. utility is paying you. Right, and that's called net metering. Yes. And um, from the standpoint of the overall goal, uh, we know that right now maybe at times 15 20 percent of low but on average maybe seven or eight percent you're being taken care of but you as a business person uh, right now we're paying somewhere around 16 17 cents a kilowatt hour uh, depending on you know the time of year and all that but this is an appreciating asset that you have on your home really yes it is and it's an appreciating asset because for many decades the system will be generating electricity and the price of electricity of course typically goes up, if not every year, every two or three years. Mm -hmm. So over that time frame, the system's value will just continue to grow. Um, and yet the investment, while you're writing out a pretty big check in the beginning, 
you're getting most of that money back from the various uh, agencies, your credit on the federal tax return, your right. credit on the state tax return, the check you get from NYSERDA, the right. New York State Energy Research Board. Yep. By the time you're done, your actual cash outlay may only be between 5 and 15% of the system. In our case, it was only about 10% of the system in right. the end was our cash. And right. so then when you think about getting 30 or 40 years of extra electricity, at an appreciating cost per kilowatt. It falls in that no-brainer category. Yes, it does. <laughs> well, right now, the actual, between your tax credits and the, the subsidies, uh, we can get about 60% of the system paid for. Uh, in your particular case, we just happened to catch it where we had just came in with the federal tax credit, yes. unlimited, 30%. Good timing. Uh, yeah, it was very good, very, very yes. good timing. I, I don't think people should wait for perfect timing. It's almost like trying to buy a stock when right. it's at its bottom right. and selling it when it's right at its top. You know, if you have a home and you're spending money on utilities, uh, anything you can look at to save you money will save you money for a long time is a good idea to, to focus on. And also, of course, uh, we only have one planet Earth. Yeah. And this system in those first six months we just talked about has generated about 1.5 megawatts of electricity, but it's also saved 1,070 tons of, of carbon, carbon dioxide. dioxide. Yeah, it's fantastic. And we can show that to you if you'd like to see it. Yeah, we want to do that. Okay, John, um, we're generating our power up on the roof. That power simply comes down into this unit, which is called a grid tie converter. And this converts the solar electricity into AC power that your house can use, that can also run your meter backwards, and your neighbor can use. Right now, it got cloudier since we were outside. So right now it's generating 2,300 watts of electricity. And that will vary. And as I mentioned earlier, on a cloudy day, even a rainy day, we may generate 1,000 watts per hour of electricity. Um, and it, even when you think that there's no chance it's making electric, it's still making a couple of hundred watts. And then if we want to look at carbon, right now this display is showing us that we've saved 1,000 69 tons of carbon dioxide. A ton of anything is impressive. A ton of anything is impressive, and a ton of something you don't want to breathe is even more impressive. <laughs> I think you're right. So there you have it. A solar system working just fantastic in a cloudy region of the country. To find out how you can put one of these systems on your home, visit us at greenhomesamerica.com for more information.